We've all heard the term jungle difference. Sometimes it's true, most of the time it isn't. But when you are the better jungler and you do carry a game, you know that you're thinking it. Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one we shall be looking at how you can get an S plus grade every game, be the MVP every game with a step by step jungle difference guide for whatever class you're playing with whatever champion you're playing. This gameplay will show you that no matter what you're actually doing on the map as long as you adhere to the basic principles of jungling at a basic and an advanced level you will have an opportunity to carry, win and climb no matter what. While these videos and tips and steps will always help you in solo queue they will also help you in 5v5 organized play. As such Gamify is hosting a League of Legends tournament on repeat.gg our sponsor for today's video. Along with $2,000 in RP cards going to the top 40 on the leaderboard, it's easy and free to join. How it works is that repeat.gg tracks your gameplay in ranked solo matches only, so no normal abusing, and gives you a score based upon your performance. It simply takes 2-3 to three minutes to sign up, add your game ID and then join the tournament. The sponsor for the tournament Gamify is a platform that allows you to invest in the future of gaming, blockchain based gaming. And if you simply love using your giant brain to share information and learn from other minds, they have a huge discord community to learn about the latest projects and learn what is about to be launched, as well as connect with the developers. Entry for this tournament is completely free, can be claimed by joining the Gamify discord server, sign up on repeat.gg and while you are jungle diffing and climbing the ladder, why not climb the ladder on repeat.gg's tournament at the same time. Click the link in the description below to enter now. And now let's jump straight into the gameplay. We have here a Diana, meta dominant, leader of all the junglers, fastest farmer and most annoying to face for many of you against a Szechuan. So how can we absolutely decimate the map, control every phase from dragons to farm to counter jungling to ganking versus a meta defining jungler? Now obviously you have to believe in yourself and understand that listen, I am better than the enemy jungler no matter what they're playing because pilot differences are the most important thing when you're climbing, not champion differences. The reason a challenge player can smurf from whatever elo is because he's just a better pilot no matter what. And you'll see the runes on your screen now as well as the introductory clears nothing out of the ordinary there. And while you won't exactly have you know the skill difference that I used in my example like a challenger play to a diamond or a platinum, you still can have enough of a skill difference that you can enact all of these things and come out ahead every single time. Now early game plan adapting and adapting your roots and understanding what to do when things don't go exactly right, I've covered that in the most recent video. But in this one obviously the Diana is going to do a full sequence, full clear and do a top lane crab. So there's one you cannot match that so what do you do? You skip the Krugs, you do a 5 camp, you gank bot lane, you just do a little bit of a look, you know that Diana started bot and is top side so you can afford to buy some time with this gank and then fall back to your crab. The difference is it doesn't end there for proactive junglers and that's the first step. Become the proactive and leading jungler on the map in the first rotation of the game, no matter what. And that comes from paying attention. You see the twisted fate is very very low in the mid lane as you would see from the frames, but in the game you need to understand that Diana definitely sequenced to the top side. She most likely is not ganking top lane, so you have to look mid lane and if she doesn't show up by this point, you can either look to position for the gank yourself, set up for the counter gank, or in the case that he's actually lost the lane in the twisted face perspective, go under tower and simply burn the flash. You have enough HP, you can move out of the radius of the tower shots, now we can push the mid wave to deny him and force his teleport. We know we can do this because Diana will have to spend time resetting and then moving up from her Krug to her Raptors again. Now here's the thing on sequencing and playing versus junglers that might be stronger than you that you don't want to face. In essence if you are in the losing matchup and this is important for the second step to understand am I winning the matchup or am I losing the matchup, which is more important, shutting the enemy down or helping my laners and you have to know which because in this situation obviously the Shishwani did the wolves into Grump and then the blue such that if she wants to match the Diana knowing she's bottom side she can go Raptors, Wolves, Grump in a very smooth sequence without having to wait for the time before the Grump if she had done blue first like the Diana. Alternatively you see your top laner struggling, the meat of Aatrox is just too much to overcome it's a pushing wave, it's a pushing Aatrox, let's go and kill him. Very very simple with a Warwick, it's not the most clean gank from either party but you know what you take the kill, the wave's in a fat state Leave and go do your Krugs and Raptors. And that's the next step, step 3, make the enemy jungler feel the need to make plays because they're chasing you around the map. If the enemy jungler is chasing your proactivity, yes she can go and counter jungle your tier 2 Grump and Wolves, but most likely she's going to be annoyed that you've ganked all 3 lanes. Now you fall back to clear your camps while she makes an over aggressive move and ends up dying for it. And within the same step and basically a general principle is, hey what can I do while the enemy jungler is dead or gray screen that I couldn't necessarily do if she was alive. Now we burn Twisted Fate's flash, we know the R is mid lane, we know the Diana's dead. If she was alive and perhaps counter jungling and floating for a mid lane gank, 
This would be more difficult considering the item disadvantage, although she backed and didn't buy Blasting one first rotation, which means it's a suboptimal buy anyway. But while I say that, you see, we go mid lane again, we kill the Twisted Fate, and now we once more go back to base. The Diana out of base now is just following the trails of the Shijuani. Her sequencing is ruined, her game plan is destroyed, and she has no idea what to actually do. And you can see that the class of champion is irrelevant because if you don't match up well, you can simply avoid them. If you do match up well, you can simply crash them, invade them, and kill them yourselves. Out of base, Shijuani goes straight to the crab in the river, obviously take the outermost objective, then fall back to your camps. I guess that's a step in itself. Always understanding objective and farming priorities. When you do that, you can make good decisions around it. See here you might think, oh look her red's up, let me invade that sucker, kill her and snack it. Well we did see the Diana kind of leave mid lane looking to go up, but maybe she faked this out, maybe she also wants to drag it. Our ADC is in base, Twisted Fate has ultimate, their bot lane's coming back from lane, if you get caught on that red buff in a 4v2, you're throwing your lead. Take the crab, take the wolves, as soon as Diana shows top lane, well now we can do the dragon. And of course if you're playing a sort of weaker class you will need some assistance, but pretty much any jungler can do it with a Nami or a Soraka, healing them up throughout the process. So Diana obviously sequenced up, kills top, and will most likely reset here. She could very easily and should probably look to invade the red side, but if you didn't gather, she's not exactly the best player in this game, and that's why I'm trying to show this to you, because when you guys face these players, and trust me, 99% of you face junglers like this, it's so easy to get these MVPs, these S plus grades, and to carry every game. So after the dragon, do the Grump, do the blue so we can extend the timer on that and obviously keep the wolves and Grump as close together in terms of their respawn time. And now the next step is unrelenting pressure on the map such that they can never recover. Decide whether that's against the enemy jungler with winning lanes or decide if you have losing lanes if that's going to be you impacting them. So you could invade the red again but the lanes are not in the best state for this. Let's let us reset, get our cams, get level 7 and now assess. And if you're assessing correctly you see ah twisted freight under tower with an Ari. I have my ultimate and I haven't used it yet. Oh, let's go ahead and do that. How do we know? Because we're timing the flash we burned from the first rotation. Repeat gangs always. If you burn flashes and summon a spells on immobile champions, punish them without remorse. Do not play this game fair. However, I will say the Sichuani has a bit of a brain fight here from the great place, maybe an ego moment. The Dyna is obviously going to be in the bottom side. We know this, we can see this. She obviously didn't track it in the moment. Walks into a Dyna, but uses a flash and Q to escape safely and the investment into Ari pays off as Ari snacks a kill back. And hopefully you can see within this video as we go back to base now, how quadrant clearing, full sequencing and ganking can exist harmoniously. The next step is to show restraint when the map does not give you what you want. In this situation, we would love to go and get that Herald, get our red buff, attack top lane, use it on some tower plates, really infuse ourselves to snowball this game beyond relief. However, in this case, our top lane is in fact losing. He dies, which means you can do red, Float up into the Krugs, why? Because we want to hold top lane, but the wave hasn't crashed yet, so we can afford to fill that time by taking some cams. Remove dead time from your game as much as possible. Anytime you're doing nothing, it's wrong, unless you're sort of waiting for a gang to sync up, but even then, could you be taking a camp as you approach? We hold the wave, we lose the Herald, we go back down to our Raptors, we want to shout a mid lane, because what if the Diana decides to gank mid? She could go top, but a bit of anticipation is necessary. You see the Sejuani does not hesitate. We have the lead. We are winning. Let's go in. Use your damage, use your CC, use your shields. It doesn't matter what champion you are, you can make this play. Obviously, if you don't have map scaling, you have to play it a little differently, but most junglers can do this. For example, even a Zyra, I would just root them over the wall and then walk around it. It's not very difficult. And that then is the next step. If the enemy jungler gains an advantage, thusly and swiftly remove it from their pocket. Isn't it fun being ahead from the early phases and just being able to control the enemy jungler? You basically take away all their decision making and say, you can do this or you can do nothing, and that makes them easy to read. Well, we farm some camps, we held a wave, we snack some plates, we got a kill, back to base. Now, we haven't been bot lane in a short minute, and we know Dragon's going to be the next objective. Do not revert back to farming tendencies. Do not stop thinking about the next play. Always one move ahead. And of course, if you're going to go bot lane, don't do Grump Wolves. Do Wolves Grump and head directly there. Is that a step? I feel like it should be, because too often people are spaghetti pathing. Don't spaghetti path and run in circles. Just go to the place you want to get to directly, and if there's stuff you can take on the way, do so. Efficiency, little junglers. Efficiency. Obviously, as I was saying all of that, you would have noticed that the Sichuani left the ground and reactively passed because the Diana ganked first. Good on her. The thing is, we're able to get a kill around, but obviously, in this situation, you're watching the Twisted Fate. He has his ult. Just do your best to peel and leave the situation. Do not die for your team. Do not die for no reason. When you're on the Fed one, you cannot afford to make that one mistake because sometimes you'll get games where you get carried, but other times you'll be the carry of the game no matter what class you are. And if you make one mistake, you lose. So it's on you to keep your heads about you, especially if you want the S plus grade. We all know that. And especially if you want to be the jungle difference. Now here the wave is crashing, plates are still up and they're about to die. So let's hold that for our team. 
But if they make a mistake, if they overstep and disrespect the fact that you're fed, which they will do against you tanks, miss a spell to bait out the black shield, totally what happened, and then go on in, use your CC and simply just kill them. You see how easy it is? A tank can do this, which means any jungler can do this, because if you have such a big lead, you should be able to. The benefit of pulling the trigger and doing this here is that they've overstayed having gold reset, and now you can very freely do the second dragon. Now, you might want to invade here and stick around on the bottom side, but sometimes invading the enemy jungle and pushing the map has to take a step back to actually holding and bending but not breaking. And that's the next step in jungle difference. Sure, you could split the map here and give the Diana free reign with the Aatrox over the top side, but we have a big lead, we can be everywhere, we need to be everywhere. Understand when to push the map and when simply to hold your side as long as possible before you can rebound and just totally eviscerate them. Now obviously Sichuani finishes the wolves to clear the whole blue quadrant before going back to base and intend us to go topside and to do a whole bunch of stuff such that when we finish doing said stuff, the Grump and the wolves will be spawned together. If the enemy team decides like the Diana and Aatrox do to reset and pull back, which is remarkable restraint actually, what are they going to do? They're going to go back to base and what would a good top laner do? Go and look to impact the map with his lead. Try and do something to create a numbers advantage to push the map in his favor. The thing is the enemy jungler, in this case of Sejuani, understands that if they overpush, they die. Because they didn't, she knows she can do her red side and float on down. And with good vision, we see the Aatrox and what should all tanks understand. And this is where the skill is, when to pull the trigger, how to stack your CC, when to peel, when to target swap. And that's what you're going to watch on your screen now. This is teamfight mechanics. This is those mechanical moments I covered in the Warwick video that I made last year on a similar topic. You will eventually have to PvP and use your lead and use it well if you want to carry these sorts of games, if you want to be the jungle difference. Jungle difference only works if you actually see it all the way through to the end. You can be the better jungler 80% of the game, but if you make 300 mistakes afterwards and the enemy capitalizes and punishes you for it, I mean, that's just like the next Fast and Furious movie. It just really doesn't matter anymore. Now, if you have numbers and the whole team is dead, you can maybe look to do other things like, once again, invade the enemy jungle, push waves, take towers, and definitely that's a metric I think you guys should think about. Always measure how much damage you're doing to towers and wins. You have to push towers to win games, to push them out. But here it's okay to do the grump, reset, finish core itemization, and head back out. You could wait for the walls, but I think that's a bad idea because you have an item set, you know that the crab's going to be spawning, you're heading that direction anyway, and the very next step in being jungle diff at this point in the mid-game is, you know how I'm always telling you to leave your grump, rotate to the fight, rotate to the gank and make an impact? In the mid-game, I call that shadowing. Because the whole map is devoid of purpose, we still have the outer towers and the bottom and the top, mid lane is pushing deep into the void beyond the vision line. I mean, Ari shouldn't be, but she is, which means when she gets caught out, leave whatever you're doing, rotate, and again, just use your lead. It's not difficult to understand the limits of your champion, and that's why I suggest core champion pools, learn the limits, play it no matter what, stop dodging, become a better player because you've got more knowledge in your database. Now here, I definitely think as a normal champion that it can actually destroy towers in one hit, you should push this wave, take the tower and bounce. But if you're a tank with a Nami, you could and probably should still do it, but we need to maintain the mid game farm. And the mid game farm is farm when your team are dead or not on the map, farm when you're on your way to a team fight or an objective, and when you do all those things well and everything works out accordingly, you can of course take the enemy camps. However, in this situation, the Sejuani wasn't focused on the objective of the tower, but to basically use that downtime for the enemy to simply take the second Herald. And obviously in this situation with the dragon coming up being the third one, very, very important, you know that they're gonna push out in weird numbers and be mispositioned. Do you need to go back to base? Big question. If not, you can stay out and force this fight. Make the pick. Win the fight, engage, peel, target swap as necessary. Now, as always, understand here after the dragon, before the dragon, do I need to reset or not? And that's a very, very important step for this video. I understand you kind of want to finish your blue sequence and your quadrant and go back to base and get some atomization spikes. And honestly, a lot of the time, it's very, very useful for you to do so. The thing is your team should pay attention to this and not put themselves in a precarious situation that would cause them to die and throw the lead while you're in base. But sometimes you will need to effectively go back to base immediately after the dragon, just so you can be on the map with your team to be present for these plays. So this is a little bit risky from the Sejuani's perspective, and it does make this mid game a little bit different, but as long as you are rotating immediately and you're actually there to control team fights, then it should be okay. But do understand that if you back a lot of the times like this where you're away from your team, you can't really complain because you're coin flipping the game because you're not part of it. And the Sejuani continuously goes through this game basically doing the same thing, pushing the map, but not looking to push side waves, not looking to take fun like we've been talking about recently. That's very much for those aggressive junglers. Again, I will link that below if you're interested in that particular play style. But for team fight champions specifically, like tanks, like fiddlesticks, you can't always afford to be away from your team. So even if the plays aren't the best, you just being there means you ought to win them. You can engage and dive between towers. You can disrespect them in front of the fountain. You can still fall back to camps and take them away. You can always take inhibitors, fall back to barons, repeat the process a few times. And please, the final step here for the mid to the late game, 
Always look to push forward, never push backwards. Always be present for the team fights. And my final point to you, and this is very important, have confidence in your ability and how fed you are. If you are looking to play like this, really stitching all aspects of jungling together to get soul, to get barons, to deny the enemy jungler, to impact every lane, to hit that 7 CS a minute kind of average on your jungler no matter what, then you have to know, ladies and gentlemen, that you can do the things necessary. And if you're continuously running away from one fight, if you're continuously not doing the things in the early game that we looked at in the previous video, you're going to have a very, very rough time even getting ahead enough to use your confidence to win. Well, there you have it. Any jungler, any class, no matter what you're doing, if you jungle like this, you're getting MVPs, you're getting S pluses, and for 99% of the ranks in this game, you will have no issue suppressing, denying the enemy jungler and becoming the jungle difference. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. Please do like, share, and comment if you did. Patreon is coaching, sign up. Patreon is coaching VODs as well. Don't forget our jungle bootcamp is coming up in one short week. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.